so let's see what time is it? it's about 10 o'clock at night i'm gonna go to sleep in an hour so let me try to do a message what happens is when another saint see you might need time to yourself but there's always a you might need a week or a day or three days or a month but there's always important there's an important step in that process to reconvene like somebody said reconvene whether it's through comments text emails phone calls whatever it is when you talk to another believer you're talking to somebody who has the spirit of truth and when you're talking to somebody else with the spirit of truth what does that mean it means you're face to face you're facing off with a person who has the spirit of truth. So what does the Bible say? It says iron sharpens iron. So does the countenance of man, man. In other words, the spirit in the man will sharpen the other man. It could be, and when I say man, I'm, it could be man and woman talking. It could be woman and woman talking, man to man talking, whatever. As long as they're believers, they're both going to be sharpened. Because you got to have something sharp to sh something sharp to sh sharpen something else. So today, a few things came up. A couple different people, email, phone calls, etc., where. I wasn't going to do a message, but this is kind of important because a lot of this stuff's not me. When I when you talk to another believer, now see this is the sad part about the 5013C. So if you go to a church and you just have the uh the uh the churchianity instead of Christianity it's churchianity, you know, the churchy type thing where you go in and you don't really talk about problems and it, and issues that you're facing. But if you do talk about, if you do find somebody in church who talks about problems, they're not looking for solutions. Yeah, we can say, oh, I'm facing this, I'm dealing with this. But when you talk to a true believer, you're looking for solutions. They're not beating you up like legalists. Well, you should have done this or no. They're they're look they know that you're growing through something. It's a process. You're growing through something. And you're going to make it to the other side because you already won. Jesus is seated in the heavenlies. Uh, he's seated in the heavenlies. And you're seated in the heavenlies in Christ. So you are, this, every struggle down here has already been uh, overcome. So when you talk to a true born-again, spirit-filled believer, they might have struggles you might have struggles they might have struggles they might be in a situation but you know they're going to overcome it you know that they will overcome it because if you put a balloon if you take a balloon down to the bottom of the pool that's full of air what's going to happen it's going to rise to the top but if you take a balloon that's flat and put it on the bottom it's just going to sink you know you know, I don't know if that's a good object lesson or picture or not, but that's that's you understand what I'm telling you, that the Holy Spirit in you <clears throat> or the Holy Spirit in a person who's a saved person, they're going to rise above. But sometimes God has to take the clay, throw it back down on the, the potter's wheel and turn it and remake it. And with... with like I say, a lot of this stuff's not me because I hear, I read comments or emails or phone calls or whatever, and I hear somebody say something, and it's either, uh, oh, a light came on. Oh, great, great. Praise God. Hallelujah. That makes total sense. Or it's conviction, or it's, um, they don't even know it. A lot of times somebody will say something, they don't even know what they said is like, something that convicts you you know or it might lead you or guide you or whatever and so something happened today where somebody said a trigger word and during the conversation it's like oh that was that was a that's how the devil does it so two believers in communication figured out 
some of the strategies or the stratagems of the devil and what we figured out that I've never heard any preacher my whole life talk about this. They might have said it in certain ways, but I've, I've tried to mull it over in my mind. And nobody's ever said this because nobody's ever really studied the etymology. And the reason people don't study the etymology who are saved is because sometimes the preacher will say, why are you studying the etymology? Why are you studying the Greek? Well, it's all in God's program. So you'll find out when you study the etymology that some words are steady state, stable, spiritual, eternal truths, whereas some words are temporal, uh, sine wave, uh, temporary truths. And so what, what trumps what in that situation? The steady state words, the words spoken in steady state, trump the words that are that are spoken that represent the sine wave in other words the way the conversation unfolded or un um, unfurled was that when we're speaking we came to the conclusion that the devil uses the base nature words if you want to use the word dense that's a lot of people don't understand what you're saying the devil uses the base nature words to try to destabilize you but if you use a word that overarches that other word then you're reprogramming a person's mind away from instabilities to stability. So in other words, what I'm saying to you is this, and I know this is hard to believe unless you study the etymology and then you would see it. There's certain words that when you speak, like manage, and like I say, I'm not taking credit for this. I'm just repeating it. Since I have a platform, I'm repeating it. And I got to protect my people, you know. But, you know, whether it's a brother in Christ, sister in Christ, or whatever, they all have the Holy Spirit. They all have wisdom. They all have the Spirit of truth. They all are following after Christ. They all have the mind of Christ. And when somebody says something deep, I don't care if they're young, old, uh, red, yellow, green, orange. I don't care what race. I don't care what denomination. If they have the Spirit of truth and they say something, I don't care about their background. But it, it, when it resonates, it resonates. And here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's what I'm trying to say. There are certain words like faith, faithful, truth, the word manage. All these are higher level words that are higher than the base nature words. And so the base nature words are to be under subjection of those spiritual words. You know, in other words, if somebody's talking about, because, um, you know, in the new heaven and new earth, there won't be any tears, right? There's nothing wrong with somebody crying. It actually shows that they have a heart, you know. But if they're always crying and they're always focused on tears and crying and complaining and their problems and 3D, if they're always focused on the 3D, you can reconfigure their mind that when you talk to them if they're saved then you can speak eternal truth and bring that 3d temporal under subjection to the eternal and if you can shift your own thinking so this is the secret to all of us for all of us because this is what happened to me today i didn't realize i had a trigger word but that trigger word when i faced off with it this me and this person we we're facing off with that trigger word it's like boom i'm set free so a lot of these trigger words people go to a psychologist and and you know you hear about mk alter and mind control and all that so as a child you were being programmed when you, before you got saved in the flesh in the natural and so everybody has a trigger word or a trigger uh, body language or trigger 
response or some kind of insecurity or some kind of something that they haven't dealt with most likely because we're still, we're all still here in the sanctification process. And so if you can understand that the devil can only use the temporal words, the temporary, the natural words, the sine wave words, the devil's stratagem is the sine wave, the up and down waves, because the Bible says there's not going to be any ocean in the new heaven, new earth, no sea, because what's the sea? It's the waves. So the wave is the wave function. And so when you focus on something, you're actually collapsing the wave function to steady state. All possibilities are out there in the holographic reality, which is in Christ, the mind of Christ. This is actually a projection from the cross. And you're playing out his story. You're following after Jesus in series and sequence after him. And so everything that hits you, if the devil can hit you with four or five things, then you get into depression or sadness or worry or fear or doubt or whatever it is. And so he's trying to destabilize you into the base nature. And he's using words. And he might not even be doing it. He just programmed you when you were a child or something that you went through. So those programs were programmed into you as a child from your bloodline, your culture, your media, your TV. This is why it's good to cut off the media and cut off the, the noise, the music. A lot of the music is just totally just to try to get you in an emotional state to where you're not thinking spiritual. You're not thinking steady state. Like, like I've said, three true faithful fate, stature, upright. God made man upright, but he sought out many inventions. And so the sine wave, the fickleness of man, is how the devil attacks and has a strategy to attack you and take you off your calling, off your steady state. This is why you hear about investors. They say, okay, I'm going to invest $500 a, a month if it kills me. Because they're not basing it on feelings. They're making it a decision, you know. Now, life can hit you. They're not God. God can, God can take everything from you. We could have a nuclear war. Or, you know, God can destroy everything in a, in a moment if he wants to rebuild you. But if you set a plan and you are steady in that plan, you should be able to overcome. Because the steady state is higher than the fickle. And the fickle is the sine wave. And so when you focus on a goal or a, uh, a plan, you're, break, you're taking that, that wave function, that sine wave function like the ocean, and it's like taking and building a pier out on the ocean. You know how you look out to the ocean and you see all these waves and somebody says, you know what, I want to build a pier out there and walk up. Think about a pier. You're actually walking on top of the ocean with a steady state feeling you walk out there on the pier and look over I'm, you know what i'm going to the beach i'm gonna walk i'm gonna go to the beach soon and go down there and, and do a video of what i'm talking about here get on the pier and talk about it. but let me try to give you a word picture so they they took and they they drilled these <clears throat> i think they use water they take these these big pylons and and shoot water down it, and they put the pylon down there and they build a they build a bridge out over the ocean now how did they do that the ocean is unstable if you go out there uh, if you get out in the ocean you're going to drown if you don't have a, a life jacket or if you're too far out there you're not going to make it back you know but if you build a pier with some with some post so at, you're out on the ocean, you, you're trying to swim back to shore. The word shore, like shore something up. So there's certain words that you can speak to people to shore them up, to steady state them, to eternalize their mind. Instead of the temporal, the fickle, the unstable, you can speak certain words that put that re-brainwashes a person's mind to think eternal, steady state, routine, stable. Because this whole system is a demonic system of an instability. That's why you, when you watch too much social media news, you go crazy. And everybody, even the unsaved people I talk to around at work, they say, I don't watch news anymore. It makes me depressed. Why? Because that's the devil's system. Praise God. Like I say, this is, this is because 
when you talk to a brother or sister and you really get down to the to the nitty gritty and we're not talking about churchianity we're talking about the internal stuff that you're willing to face and so if both people are humble enough to con have a conversation say yeah i have a trigger or i did this or i you know i overcame this or you you try to talk to each other and and find common ground and see where the where the blind spot is you can't force it a person has to do it on their own it's a process you know let's say let's say you're dealing with somebody who has a blind spot it might take a year it might take 10 years but you got somebody who's dealing with a blind spot they didn't see it their whole life why do they why do you think you can fix it god is the only one that can show it but when two people are talking the spirit of truth can reveal it more clearly and if you use a parallel of something that that person observed you can try to show them and actually this conversation came up yesterday with a co-worker where we were talking about how i was talking about how there was somebody that uh, somebody always saw the fault in others but they couldn't see themselves the very thing that they were doing let me let me use this example let's say there's somebody let's say there's somebody who's watching this let's say they're at the grocery store and this woman's watching this uh mother yell at her kids right just really just yelling blessing the kids out and you're saying quit why is she so mean and yelling at her kids like that, and especially in public? But then that very person who observes that actually had just got off the phone and she was yelling at her kids and her her husband or her coworker or somebody heard her and they're observing saying, why are you mad at that person who was yelling at their kids and you just did it? The reason is because the thing... Like Job said, the thing we fear most has come upon us, and the thing we see in others is probably in us, right? Um, if you are, if you hate, if you hate thieves enough that they just want to make you just want to go over and chase them and mess them up pretty bad, it's probably because you might be doing something in your life that's thievery. In other words, you might be going to Home Depot and using a tool, and after you use it, you take the receipt and turn it back in, and you just destroyed. They they don't they don't make money off of that. So you stole from Home Depot even though you gave the product back. And there's people that do that all the time. They'll buy a tool and then they'll use it. <clears throat> I've seen this. They'll buy a tool and then they'll use it and take it back and get their money back. They used to. I don't know if they still do it or allow them to do it or not. But I saw them doing it at Walmart, Home Depot. But then this person will turn around and say, I don't like anybody stealing from me because if they steal from me, I'm going to take them out or something like that. So the very the the anger that they have for a thief is because deep down they were thieving Home Depot or Walmart. So my point is this. Sometimes you have to show people with a very sharp blade and you have to show them over time because so many, the heart's deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Some people just never look at their own heart. They can't do it. it it's just... They cannot be introspective. There's some people that I know that you know this. There's some people in your world that's they're never introspective, but they can see it in other people. And so, but when you got two believers who are humble enough to to both grow in that situation, you got something. And so, long story short, by taking a break. And reading, you know, listen to other people, listening to their comments, listening to their emails, phone call, whatever. When you take a break from talking or you take a break from whatever you do, it doesn't have to be whatever your routine is. You just sit back and observe and you listen. You can probably learn a lot more when you just stop what you're doing, listen to what other people are saying, introspective, and it will help you in the long run. And so this other conversation I had, is huge too this is huge this is so huge i mean this is so huge i just wish i wish i could word it i wish i had the words i wish i had the words but i don't have the words you just if you got the spirit of truth you can hear me i guess 
It sounds new agey, but it's not. Because the Bible says you reap what you sow. But if you change yourself, I don't care if it's on a job. I don't care if it's in a home. I don't care if it's in a church. I don't care if it's being a, a Lyft driver. I don't care if it's being a food delivery person. I don't care what a citizen. If you change your inside and you get a new perspective from the inside, the outside has to change. And you say, why? The reason why is because you're not responding to the outside the same way you were before. When my neighbors used to be over there making a bunch of noise and I finally put the fence up, I got me some earphones, uh, uh, those things you put over earmuffs or whatever. And I started working more and I started, I, I just ignored them. They went away. Now I went over there today. She says, you, I was asking her if she wanted to buy this car. She asked me to come in. She's, they're nice people. Don't get me wrong. But my environment changed. Now I'm able to talk to them in a peaceful way. Before it was like we were arguing back and forth. What's wrong with you? Can't we play our music? We were fighting with each other. Now we're talking because I changed the inside. They changed the inside. Their environment changes. By them going out back, playing their music instead of in the front yard, by me not uh, getting mad about it or even talking about it, even thinking about it, the environment changed. But that's just a minor, that's, just, that's not even a big deal. That's microscopic. But my point is, when you change the inside, and like I say, this is not for me. This is a conversation I have with somebody that iron sharpens iron. So when you're having a conversation with somebody, it changes you. And when you're introspective and you change the way you look at something, the thing that you're looking at has to change. And it's, let's, say if it's, let's say if it's on the job, you change your you, you go into a job and say, nobody's a team player, but you become a team player. They become a team player. In a marriage, there's no communication. You start to communicate. You, and even if they don't communicate, you communicate with other people and they're sitting there listening to you and watching you. And maybe they don't communicate so they don't know how. You know, But when you start to communicate with other people, they start to communicate with you and you communicate with each other. Iron sharpens iron. And so when you change the inside... Like I say, this is not from me. This is from a conversation. When you change the inside, the outside has to change because the outside is a reflection of how you reflect to the outside's reflection. In other words, if you're in a situation and you no longer re respond the way that other person is expecting you to respond, they've got to change because you did a change up. And because you didn't change up on the inside, it shows up on the outside and the reflection of the other people around you or the environment around you has to change because it reflects the way you are facing off with the other person. So how can I tie those two things together? The trigger words, the reflections, changing your inside. Well, you got they're all connected to being introspective and being willing to to be humble enough to listen to what other people are saying listen to what the spirit of truth is saying, what God is saying, and the, the lesson that he's teaching you, the sanctification process, and sometimes it's painful. But once you get through to the other side, once you get through to the other side, the devil has no power. The devil loses his power. Because the devil used those triggers, and it might not even be a word. It could be a body language. It could be somebody's race. It could be somebody's gender, their size. It could be somebody's uh, clothing, their looks, their economic. It could be somebody. There's a lot of men that hate women. There's a lot of women that hate men. Why? Because something happened in their childhood. If you hate women, man, something's wrong from your childhood. And women, if you hate men, there's something wrong from your childhood. You need to be introspective. If you look at somebody who doesn't have the skills or the finances you have, and you that look down on something wrong with you because you don't know what they've been through. And if somebody looks at somebody who's got a million dollars or a trillion or whatever, 
you don't know it's something you don't know what they've been through yeah we know black rock is we know black rock is crazy and evil so you know it's okay to be mad at them <laughs> <laughs> but he might but but here's the sad part is they think they're doing right uh blackrock bill gates they think they're doing right because they followed the devil and the devil's lying to them and they believe the lies of the devil and it's all upside down long story short introspection communication iron sharpens iron don't be afraid to say hey what's my trigger word hey what's my uh Blind spot. What's my? You don't want. It's very hard for when somebody points it out to you. You don't want to. You want to resist it, but it's. But it's good to face off with it because you on the other side you're free. It's all about setting the captives free. Jesus, if the if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So here's the thing. So these high level words, steady state, upright, stable, eternal should trump the lower level words, the emotional, uh, the basket case mindset, the instability, the fickleness or whatever. The lower level conversations actually brainwash yourself. And so if you can use in a conversation, and like I say, this is not for me. I mean, this is part of me because it, it's a back and forth iron sharpens iron. It's, it's really two people coming to a conclusion. If you can use steady state words or eternal words to explain a temporal truth, and you'll have to come up, you'll have to try to figure this out on your own because I, I really can't make you see this. If you can use eternal words like steady, stable, faith, true, truthful, these are overarching patterns in, in life. You know there's a pattern that's an overarching pattern. But then when you see people, you if you go to the bar, everybody's drinking and drugging. Yeah, I'm having fun. What about you? Yee-hoo, yee-haw. And they're just base nature. They're just lower level. And then when things don't go right, they fight each other and they end up in jail at the bar. Why? Why were they mad? Because they didn't rise above the lower level conversation and that conversation is a program that the devil uses through your bloodline, your culture to program you into the lower nature and the TV's doing it. So they're using these words because Jesus is the word, the Bible, the devil's. See, this is the revelation. And that was from another conversation. So when God reveals something to you, it's not like you're outside the Bible. You're just understanding the Bible in a deeper way. So I'm taking two conversations and I'm putting it all together. So when God reveals to you a revelation it's not that it's outside the bible it's just revealing it in a more deeper way and you can call it a download you can call it an insight or whatever you want to call it but it's re god revealing his word more and more and so the, the thing about it is if you realize the words that you speak you're programming yourself i'm not trying to sound like uh Joyce Myers, you know, but there is truth in, every, in what she's saying. If you speak it, you're programming your mind and the words, are, the words I speak are spirit life, Jesus said, and the spirit always trumps the natural. Mind over matter is, is a saying for a reason because mind is spirit. And so when you speak words that are overarching the base nature words, you're pre-programming yourself and you're reprogramming re -program, re the other person. And the example that was, this, the example was uh, the word feeling. Instead of saying, how do you feel through this crisis? See the word feel and crisis? Those are lower level words. Those are more dense. But if you say, how are you managing this crisis? That's a higher level word because you're you're taking control of it. How are you managing this during this crisis? That's brainwashing a person to think eternal truth that you can overcome, that you will make it, and it's giving them hope and positive. And you can do that. And those are just two words. That's just an example that we came to the conclusion. But there's a thousand other ways you could say this stuff. 
I haven't, and this could be a book, this could be audio, this could be a, a series. This is huge. And so what we concluded was, and you know this in your spirit, that the devil uses the base nature words, whether it's the media, the news, Hollywood, whatever. The devil uses base nature words to destabilize you. But God's word, he gives you steady state words like faith, true, faithful, uh, the eternal promises of God. So God's word gives you the eternal promises to stabilize you, whereas the devil gives you the temporal words to destabilize you. And so I had to do this. If it's if it's important, I'm still going to upload, but I I'm so busy. I just I don't have much time, so I got to I got to cut it off now, but I hope you can hear how important words are and how important it is to have people around you who are using promises of God, the truth and speaking life eternal life instead of the temporal which is the death cult the temporal your mortal body is temporal but your spirit mind see if i say if i just go all day long talking about your mortal body which is death or i can talk your eternal spirit which is spirit what would give you more hope knowing that you are a spirit creature eternal life instead of just a mortal dead body that's just but the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies my point is if you can start practicing this in the people around you, job, home, whatever, practice it with yourself. We destroy the devil and we destroy any kind of triggers, whether it's uh, something from your culture. You can overcome by using these eternal words instead of using the temporal words. So you can collapse the wave function, the sine wave, into a goal, into a process or whatever, because you're speaking from eternity and not from death or temporal. And so the reason I think I'm doing this recording is because I'm trying to formulate in my mind how to apply this everywhere all the time, even in my own thought process. Because when an emotion comes up that's, oh no, it's the end of the world, you got to catch that emotion before it uh, plants a seed and, and take that thought and... Use the word of God, the truth, the eternal truth, to take that law and cast it away so the devil can't put that seed in there. So a lot of people are fickle or a basket case mindset because they're they're not controlling their thoughts or they got people around them who are speaking death or speaking dense, base nature words instead of stable, steady state and faith and hope and love and truth. Love is steady state. Truth. Peace is steady state. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. All those are steady state words. But if you read Galatians 5, 19, all those are base nature, temporal words. So let's say, you know, let's say uh, two people get married. you got to have agape love before you can have the romantic love. Because if you have agape love, that's steady state. But the romantic love is up and down emotions, right? Oh, that feels good. Uh, when we're together, it feels so great. But what happens when you disagree? There's the, where the agape love kicks in. So my point is, you have to have agape love, which is eternal, before you have some kind of uh, natural love, or you're going to be miserable. You've got to trump the natural with the spiritual. You see? hope that makes sense. Hope that helps. And I hope that helps somebody, because this is a new revelation. It's not outside the Bible. It's just revealing the Bible in a deeper way, how the devil's attacked the church all these years. And you already knew it. But you just needed somebody to word it and verbalize it in a way that you could put all the puzzle pieces together and see what they're saying. And I hope it might be another week before I talk, but I hope that helps somebody to break free. And if somebody has a comment or, an, you know, I read all the comments. If they are silly or uh, mocking comments, I don't approve them. But my point is, you know. You already know this, but nobody talks about it. No preacher. I've never heard any preacher talk about this. This is a revelation, but it's not outside the Bible because we know the devil uses words because Jesus is the word and the devil has to use words because we're all from the word, the logos. And that's why God gave us his word. And that's why we have body language. And that's why we're a character because we're a character in the word. You have a character. 
God gave you a character, but you can change your character if you're introspective to a better character, if you listen to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I could talk about this for an hour, but I'm going to cut it off now. Hope that helps.